Deputy Lord Lieutenant, distinguished guests, and a family, kinfolk, if I can ask the Deputy Lord Lieutenant, Noel Lamb, to come forward and read a message from Her Majesty the Queen, please. The following message has been received from Buckingham Palace. The Queen has asked me to thank you and the members of the Schomburg Society Kirikia for the loyal greetings sent on the occasion of a ceremony to unveil a statue of the Victoria Cross recipient, Robert Hill Hammer, which is being held on the 20th of August. Her Majesty appreciated your thoughtfulness and writing as you did, and in return, sends her warm good wishes to all those who will be present for a most successful and memorable evening Buckingham Palace, the 8th of August, 2022. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
As chairman of the Schomburg Society, I would like to welcome you all here this evening to this very auspicious occasion here in the Kingdom of Morn. This is a very proud event for everyone in the Schomburg Society and we are thrilled to see such a large crowd here in attendance this evening at the official unveiling of our statue in honour of Ulster Scott, Victoria Cross winner Robert Hill Hanna. It has been almost two years now since the Schomburg Society embraced this exciting project and we are all delighted to be here tonight to now officially unveil what we believe will be a very fitting tribute to one of Morn's finest sons. Our MC for tonight will be Lieutenant Colonel Kingsley Donaldson and I'm now going to hand over to our MC Kingsley who will be in charge of the rest of the proceedings for the event tonight. Thank you. Please, take your seats. So, uh, fair fire to the Kingdom of Moor. Uh, you are very welcome here in our Ulster Scots Parliament. And it's lovely to see all of you, uh, all of the wider community have gathered to join us this evening. So we are extremely grateful for all of you. Uh, the weather is on our side, uh, for now anyway. So having asked you to sit down, I'm going to ask you to stand up, please, again. But not the Canadians. Uh, we are very grateful for the efforts made by the Hanna family and our wider Canadian family in raising a substantial sum of money to make this happen and for travelling uh, an epic distance to be with us this evening. So in an Ulster Scots fashion, I'd ask everyone here to put their hands together and I'll give you a warm round of applause in the room. friends and, and family here and, and I guess that's the, the core of our Ulster Scots cultural tradition that friends and family but there are some strangers amongst us and it would be uh, remiss of us not to just give a little bit of background about what all this is about. So first of all I, I should uh, introduce the Schoenberg Society and the Schoenberg Society have been at the forefront of the Ulster Scots community revival here in the Kingdom of Morton. They are a group of local volunteers who give a huge amount of their time in order to inject some pace, humour uh, and uh, fun into the celebration of our Ulster Scots culture. Roberta and James, Gareth the Chairman, uh, the committee, Esther, Stephen, and the whole range of folk who take evening after evening to create events such as this, to teach young folk Highland dancing, to introduce people to music, to help folk to engage and interact with their Ulster Scots culture and the language. They do a fabulous amount of work, and for those of you who don't already know about it, then you can get yourself uh, engaged online if you look up the Schoenberg Society or Reavers House, you'll get all the information you need there. Suffice it to say that the Ulster Scots culture is alive and well here in the Kingdom of and beginning to thrive in other places too. And it's appropriate that we celebrate an Ulster Scot son of Moon who went, like many others, from these shores to Canada, uh, where he made a new life for himself. But when his old country called, he answered the call and came along with so many others. And indeed, it's worth remembering when we commemorated the Battle of uh, Passion Deal in 2017, and we read about the names of men from Moon who served and died in New Zealand regiments, Australian regiments, Canadian regiments, who were out ready to enter the war with American regiments who were serving in the Indian Army, as well as in British and Irish battalions. We must never forget that diaspora and the sacrifice they made. And I often am reminded of that scene in Private Ryan where Mrs. Ryan receives the telegrams. And in Bally Martin, those telegrams were arriving in the post office and being cycled out to Ulster Scots townlands in Bally Vey, Ballinran, Ballinmajoch, Anlong, all around the kingdom to deliver the news that a son wouldn't be returning them. So it's more than appropriate that we gather 105 years on 
to take time to reflect and to celebrate that service and that sacrifice and that golden thread that flows through to today where our veterans are on parade, our loyal orders are on parade, our Ulster Scots uh, community groups are on parade too. And that bond was there then and it's here now. Um, I suppose um, in further fun places, sometimes the Ulster Scots community are regarded as a little doer. It's not the case, but that sometimes is how we're regarded. We are tight, perhaps, uh, not just with the wallet, but on occasion uh, with the humour, and sometimes the welcome can be a little cool at first, but warm after a while. And so we wouldn't normally be associated with such a, an expansive or ambitious, and some might say madcap idea, to raise money and put up a statue for someone who, frankly, lived a long way away. But such an idea had a gestation five years ago when we laid a memorial stone for the hand of the VC, and uh, folk were, I guess, crazy enough to decide that actually we ought to go ahead and go a bit further. But we're a very um, blessed town of Kilkeel and that Robert Hill Hannah isn't the only Victoria Cross winner who has his links here. Of course, Scott, the VC, has his links here and is buried in the Church of Ireland graveyard too. So we have those remarkable men. There's a Medal of Honour winner from Kilkeel who went and served with the Americans. There's the Chesney family who gave great military service too. So this great idea, no doubt uh, formed in part uh, whilst exploring some of the uh, other cultural aspects of our former Scottish ancestors, uh, to raise money, a considerable amount of money, in excess of £50,000, to put up a statue. Never mind the planning barriers and having to try and persuade folk like the Kilkeel Development Association, the Council, and other stakeholders that such a thing would be appropriate and also that the time is right to do so. And a lot of doubt about raising that kind of money whenever well, times were understandably difficult. But uh, that money was raised. A local sculptor, uh, David Weir, was found and commissioned to do the work. And this evening you'll see a statue unveiled that combines all the beauty and formality of the Portland stones so associated with commemorations and memorials of the First War. But you'll see that statue perched on a piece of very solid Norm granite, exemplifying and symbolising that that man was made in Moore, and that his roots, his characteristics, are reflective of the Ulster Scots community in Moore, and that strong, durable ground. The same durability that was required to carry a lamb egg drum up sleeve Donard to raise money, and they had for side our local MLA at the forefront of that, and I'd say, uh, not having to follow me all the way up the hill, for I, I wouldn't have been the easiest thing to follow, I'm sure, and lots of others, and Ivan Martin and others are here, who made that such a pleasurable day. There were some folk at the top of Sleeve Donald who I think weren't expecting a rendition from the Lambeck drum, but having got themselves up that far, it was the least they deserved. <laughs> so a lot of work has gone on, a lot of planning, and this isn't just old-fashioned stone masonry. You're talking about three-dimensional design, about virtual reality used to produce a model that we could sculpt from. So we're talking cutting-edge technology as well as very old-fashioned stone masonry. The sort of stone mason techniques that came to this part of the world from Scotland, the Reavers, down the Scottish borders and others who worked on granite and other stone in Scotland brought that year that went on to fashion the Moor Mall celebrating its centenary this year. So a lot of work and a lot of people to thank which we'll do towards the end of the service. For this is a monumental effort. It needed to be because what Robert Hill Hanna did was monumental. And it only right that we made that effort to recognise what he did and, and therefore we pushed ourselves hard in order to match that and we should be reflective of just what we have achieved in that regard. Now, enough blether uh, from this Ulster Scott. Uh, if the Reverend Bingham, if you'd like to join me, we will begin our formal service. So if you pick up your order of service and go to the centre, uh, you'll see everything there you need. Let us worship God, let us all pray. Our gracious God and Father, you are the creator and sustainer of this world and everything in it. We thank you that we're gathering here this evening in the beauty of the kingdom of morn to remember that you are the one who have blessed us richly with a land so fair and bounteous, with a history of which we are so proud 
and with a legacy of so many whom we're proud to walk after. We thank you for the gift of life, for the wonder of the world in which you have placed us, for all the blessings you so freely lavish upon us. Forgive us that too often we take our gifts and our freedoms for granted, and help us to remember more of those who gave so many things to us at such a high price. Help us to use our gifts wisely, faithfully and generously, that we might show our gratitude in deed as well as in word, and so glorify your name. We thank you for this opportunity to gather as a community to unveil and dedicate this statue. We thank you for the courageous and inspirational life of V.C. Hannah, whose image the statue bears, for the skill of the master craftsman who created it, for the vision of those who inspired and purposed it, for the support of the community who provided it. We pray your blessing on the events of this evening, that what we may do now will bring honour and glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll stay and lead you in song. <laughs> Let's stand then to sing our praise, a um, well-known hymn for the people of Northern Ireland. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come.
it's hard to put into words what this means for our family. It is truly humbling to know that this monument will stand tall in the lower square of Kilkeel for generations to come. My father would be so proud of his beloved hometown of Kilkeel in honoring him this day. On August 21st, 1917, my father's act of bravery at Hill 70 led him to be awarded the Victoria Cross. For many years, this was considered to be the forgotten battle. It is grateful, it is gratifying, sorry, to know that this statue will stand as a reminder for not only this battle, but for all who fought for our freedoms. Again, I would like to thank everyone involved for creating this legacy. On behalf of my family, we are truly honored to be part of this day. Thank you. We have a statue that no one else has seen before, so we'll give Bob just a minute or two to take it in because we've deliberately kept this. The TV people weren't able to see it yesterday, it stayed under wraps. So we'll just give Bob and the family a minute just to take in what David has achieved. Well done, Paul. Uh, your father would be proud of you. Well done. So I'm going to ask uh, the Reverend William Bingham to dedicate the new statue. We remain standing for prayer. Gracious God, you call us as a community to remember the things of old, to stand firm and to recall to mind your faithfulness and the courage and exceptional bravery of those who selflessly thought of others before themselves. As we dedicate the statue of Robert Hanna Victoria Cross, may the statue that represents his strength of character, spirit of courage and commitment to his comrades and community inspire us and future generations in the kingdom of Morn to be courageous and to live courageously for our people, that in doing so we might remember the rock from which we were hewn, that we might hold fast to that which is good, that we render to no one evil for evil, but that we would honour our country and our queen, that we would seek to love and serve and do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. And so I dedicate this statue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and to the glory of God. Amen. Please be seated, everyone.
You'll see the inscription is be, cour be courageous and let us be courageous for our people. It was taken from 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 12. Been asked by the Schomburg Society to briefly explain this inscription chosen for the Robert Hill Hannah VC statue. But first we're going to read uh, from 2 Samuel chapter 10. Uh, the passage that speaks to us of these words. When Joab saw that the battle was set against him, both in front and in rear, he chose some of the best of Israel and arrayed them against the Syrians. The rest of his men he put in charge of Abishai, his brother, and he arrayed them against the Ammonites. And if I say that the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the Ammonites are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be of good courage, and let us be courageous for our people and for the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what seems good to him. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near to battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. And when the Ammonites saw that the Syrians fled, they likewise fled before Abishai and entered the city. Then Joab returned from fighting against the Ammonites and came to Jerusalem. Courage. And we're here today to remember the courage of an amazing man. J.R. Tolkien once said, Courage is found in the most unlikely places. In the Bible, a shepherd boy takes on a giant, David and Goliath, and brings him to the ground with the strength of God. In a little school in Balanran, two people in school at the same time were awarded the highest award for valour in service of country. Margaret Anderson, a nurse who in two world wars cared for the sick and dying, received the Royal Red Cross. V.C. Hannah, of course, Victoria Cross. One on the 18th of December, 1919, and the other 105 years ago, tomorrow. Courage is found in unlikely places, in the hamlets and valleys and villages right throughout our country. But courage is also contagious. When a brave man takes a stand, the spines of others are also stiffened to take that stand with us. Here in 2 Samuel chapter 10, Joab, who is the leader of the army, gathers his people together before battle and says to them, be courage, courageous, and let us be courageous for our people. It's a speech before a battle, a little bit like that of Lieutenant Colonel Tim Collins on the eve of the battle speech going into Iraq. But here is... Joab bringing his armies together and as he does so he tells him to strive for courage courage and strength are not a matter of emotion or circumstance they are matters of choice people choose to be courageous they're confident enough to do that which is true and noble and just BC Hannah wasn't born brave or courageous he chose to do what he did on Hill 70, to be an inspiration to us all. Then says Joab, let us strive for our people. Joab called them to remember all that they could lose if they didn't fight the battle. If they lost this battle, they would lose both their people and their cities. The battle was bigger than themselves. And the army had to remember that. Those who we remember, who fought bravely and courageously, thought beyond themselves to this community, to home, to Balran, to the folk of the kingdom of Born, that we might have a goodly heritage and freedoms and liberties. And then finally Job said, let the Lord do what seems good. Job wisely prepared for battle the best of his ability 
He strove for victory. But like many of us within our nation, we recognize that it is of God's strength too that the battle is won, that it is his and he delivers us. As we chose the inscription, we wanted it to remember, to look back at the heroic acts of a very brave man. But we also wanted our community to associate with that, to look forward and to follow in his footsteps, to follow, follow the legacy that he left behind, that he, being courageous, might also inspire us to be courageous too, and to do justly, to live at peace with all men, to seek first the righteousness and glory that exalts a nation. I'd now like to call uh, Lieutenant Colonel James Barrett to join me. Uh, James is from the British Columbia Regiment Association of Canada and he will share with us the citation for Robert Hill Hammond's Victoria Cross. Uh, I think on the rear of your order of service if you want to follow along. Company Sergeant Major Robert Bill Hanna. Victoria Cross citation. For most conspicuous bravery in attack, when his company met with most severe enemy resistance and all the company officers became casualties. A strong point, heavily protected by wire and held by a machine gun, had beaten off three assaults of the company with heavy casualties. This warrant officer, under heavy machine gun and rifle fire, coolly collected a party of men, and leading them against this strong point, rushed through the wire and personally bayoneted three of the enemy and brained the fourth, capturing the position and silencing the machine gun. This most courageous action displayed courage and personal bravery of the highest order at this most critical moment of the attack and was responsible for the capture of a most important tactical point. And but for his daring action and determined handling of a desperate situation, the attack would not have succeeded. Company Sergeant Major Hanna's outstanding gallantry, personal courage, and determined leading of his company is deserving of the highest possible reward. Well, uh, the Padre appears to have run off with my order of service, which is rather unfortunate. Safe in the arms of Jesus. <laughs> so could I ask them that those who are uh, going to participate in the act of remembrance to join me? So Major Fisher, George, yeah, your bugler, please, or bugler, Mark. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
And when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we give our today. Thank you. So uh, we're delighted uh, to be joined uh, by uh, the Military Wives Choir. So you can take a seat again while the ladies take their place. Uh, you will be aware of the phenomenon of the Military Wives Choir, the television program uh, that, that brought the, the ladies uh, 
and their talent to the fore. And we're blessed in Northern Ireland to have a, a very vibrant military wives choir. In 2016, we were honoured by their presence at our Battle of the Somme commemoration service in St. Anne's Cathedral, and they broke our hearts with a rendition of Bring Him Home from Les Miserables, which we will hear of a little later. But uh, they put their shoulder to the wheel uh, when it came to fundraising too. And they were with us uh, last September at our fundraiser and signed for us there. So it's both a delight and fitting that they're back with us to uh, entertain us again. And we're going to hear uh, from Judith McCabe and the team, uh, the Poppy Red. Those of you who understand your military poetry, I hope will listen closely at some of the lyrics attributed to a Canadian veteran, John McRae, from the First War, or why we've chosen this particular song to signify that Canadian connection. Judith. Thank you. 
Judith, thank you. That was lovely. Um, the folk from home won't uh, need hearing this, but I'm going to say it anyway, uh, because we have folk with us this evening who maybe haven't been exposed to um, the array of culture that that we have here at home available in Moran. But it's lovely to think of that fusion of singing, poetry, music. This evening uh, we're blessed with bands that cover the broadest spectrum of music. We have our wonderful silver band, uh, Ochnahuri Pipe Band took part in the parade, the Private Ballamrand Flute Band took part in the parade, Ballamajok Accordion Band took part in the parade, and of course the Schoenberg Fife and Drum took part in the parade. Have I left anybody out, Roberta? No. Every instrument genre covered. Our Highland dancers are here, so we can dance for you too. And it's just a gentle reminder that deeply embedded within this community is that very vibrant, healthy culture across all genders and all ages. And their level and the expertise shown would put many a professional military band to shame. Uh, never mind uh, some other uh, uh, groups and bands. And it's just that understanding of what that culture is about because people sometimes are a little bedazzled by the uniforms. There is that lending of a, an ear to the military and some of the uniforms reflect that. The Pride of Ballon Ranch uniform uh, uh, pays more than a passing eye to the Royal Marines. Uh, Cranfield Accordion, if they were here, and more than a passing nod to the Royal Air Force, Sean Burke, who wear that uniform reflector of the First War or Pike Major in a uniform that you would see adorning a Royal Irish Regiment or indeed an Irish Guards band too. But it's more than that, it's about a community of music, about playing music at home, about celebrating music. That's something Robert Hillhanna understood very well and it's good that we're able to bring that together, that very big part of our uh, culture. And that's appropriate that I would ask uh, Ian Crozier to join me here uh, uh, to say a few words Ian is the Chief Executive of the Ulster Scots Agency and they are a great supporter um, of uh, our culture more widely and very particularly here they've helped us in Moore to bring about a renaissance. That's a, the, not an Ulster Scots word obviously but it'll get there. There'll be, a, there'll be an interpretation of that before long. Um, they, were willing, uh, they were willing compatriots in the fundraising effort. They shared the vision from the outset. They did a very good piece on Victoria Cross winners earlier during our centenary commemoration and they have been uh, strong supporters of our efforts to integrate all the aspects of that culture into something as popular, accessible and easy going and welcoming as what we're doing this evening. Ian. Thanks indeed Kingsley uh, for your, your kind words and also for the invitation to join you back here in the Kingdom of Moore on what is a very special evening as we come together to commemorate and to value the life and legacy of a great Ulster Scot, Robert Hill Hanna VC. <coughs> if you only watch the television, you might think, what's Ulster Scots got to do with this? This is a thing about the First World War. It's about the military. Sure, Ulster Scots is that thing where they talk about digging shocks and digging stains. And, you know, you see on the TV from time to time. But of course, down here in the Kingdom of Moore, people know that that's not what Ulster Scots is about. Ulster Scots is about a community of people. People that you see every day, people that you know, your friends, your family, the people who are around you here. People who have a shared Scottish ancestry. People who have a faith which is largely, but not exclusively, Presbyterian. Yes, we do have a language of our own. We don't use that language as often as we would have a hundred years ago. But I can assure you, every one of us here would use it every day in some way. And we have 400 years of shared history in this wee part of the world. As we say at Ulster Scots, we were mined in Scotland, forged in Ulster, and exported worldwide. And Robert Hill Hanna was one of the people who was exported worldwide. And the contingent that are here today from Canada is testament to the global nature 
of the community that we are part of. In Robert Hanna's time, the community was very much aware of its cultural identity. And the cultural identity of our community was very well known further afield. In 1911, when Robert was a young man, Lord Rosebery, who had been the UK Prime Minister, spoke of our community and he said, I love Highlanders and I love Lowlanders. But when it comes to that branch of our race that has been grafted onto the Ulster stem, I take off my hat in veneration and awe. They are, I believe, without exception, the toughest, the most dominant, the most irresistible race that exists in the universe at this moment. They're big words, I'm sure you'll agree. Not just the biggest people in Moor, the biggest people in Ulster, the biggest people in the universe. But, and by the way, Lord Rosebery was not uh, what you might call a friend of Ulster. So he was somebody who wasn't coming from the same place that many of us would come from. But our community earned the reputation that he spoke of. We supplied the greatest politicians, scientists, diplomats, soldiers, artists in the British Empire. We took this wee corner of the world with no particular advantages, no great richness in raw materials or anything like that, and we turned it into an economic powerhouse. The Ulster Scots people earned the reputation that he spoke about. And on the 21st of August 1917, Robert Hill Hanna lived up to the reputation that he spoke about. <laughs> and generations that came after him lived up to the reputation that they spoke about. And there's a monument on the far side of the square to people in later generations who lived up to the reputation. But in more recent times, we've maybe been in a little bit of danger of forgetting who we are as a people and the things that we've done. This statue will be an important reminder, not just of the heroic deeds of Robert Hanna, but of the Ulster Scots community that he came from and that still lives here in the Kingdom of Moore. And of course, this is about looking back on a heroic past and been proud of our heritage and where we've come from. But it's also about confidently sharing our Ulster Scots heritage with our neighbours and with the people who come here to mourn to visit. But most importantly of all, it's about inspiring future generations of Ulster Scots to understand what I believe Robert Hill Hanna teaches us. That with courage, and ingenuity and determination. What down here you call them thrown. <laughs> there is no hill that we cannot scale, there is no problem that we cannot solve, and there is no enemy that we cannot defeat. That inspiration comes from rediscovering our Ulster Scots identity. And there's great work you've heard about it from Kingsley. There's great work going on here in the Kingdom of Morn. The promoter of Ulster Scots heritage and this statue is testament to both the drive of the Schomburg Society and the support that they are given by the whole community here in Morn. The first time the statue was mentioned to me was at an event in Schomburg House. And not for the first time I was collared by Roberta, who had an idea that would cost money. <laughs> And she talked me through it, and I thought, this sounds great. Then she told me how much it was going to cost. And then I thought, well, we'll wait and see. Lots of places have talked about putting up statues. You only have to think about the Belfast people continually talking about putting up a statue to George Best. And we've heard it lots, and we've never seen it. So I said to Roberta that night, Come back to me when you're halfway there. 
and we'll see about getting over the line. Um, within a very short time, relatively short time, when you think of the, 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 the years that it's taken to do it, but within a very short time, Roberta was back. And as my wife, who is a newly woman, said to me, I don't know why you ever doubted the mourn people that it would happen. It's a great pleasure to be here to see it come to fruition. It's been a pleasure to meet uh, Mr. Hanna, who unveiled the statue, and I hope, hope in due course to meet other members of the family. This is a day and an event that will be long remembered within the Ulster Stats community. And I hope that you agree with me that what has been produced here is a fitting tribute not just to the bravery and the legacy of Robert Hill Hanna, but the Ulster Scots community of Mourn that he came from. Thank you. Thank you for those kind, kind words. So, uh, no Ulster Scots evening uh, is ever quite complete without uh, us trying to blow your eardrums, and uh, this is one such evening. So uh, we're going to be joined now by uh, the Schoenberg Society Lambeck Drummers. Um, those of you from Canada who are sitting closer to the front, <laughs> this is something that will take you home. Uh, you, you won't need your earbuds for the flight back. So uh, we have uh, two Lambeck drums here, and of course you know what this is about. This is this tremendous noise that can be made that would send shot waves across the battlefield enough to scare uh, any Scot out of his kilt and over the hill on the way home. And so uh, we're going to have two drums played this evening by relatives of Robert Hanna. So tonight we've got Adam Graham and Ian Hanna, and they're going to play on the Ochnahuri Lodge drum and the Robert Hill Hanna VC drum, owned by John Hanna, who's here too. So this is a... Well, I don't know what the collective for Hannah's is, uh, 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 but uh, we'll think of a good Ulster Scots word for it sooner. A clatter of Hannah's, maybe. Some a clatter, there you are. I'm getting the hang of it too. Uh, and, and of course, this is another important part of Robert Hannah's culture, his heritage, that orange and musical tradition. And, and again, we're very proud. We wear that tradition easy and light, and that's what this is about. So we've got this wonderful Ochnahuri connection. You can see the banner. They changed the name to the Ochnahuri Heroes a reflection of the service and sacrifice of the men from that townland who went forward and fought. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, the floor is yours.
Uh, well done, Adam and Ian. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd now ask uh, Neil Cousins to join me here uh, out front. Neil is the... Um, I hope he doesn't mind me saying it, so I'll apologise in advance. He is the outgoing or retiring worship the master for more district orange order also another uh, member of the wider Anna family in fact you live quite close to Anna's booth so ian uh, is going to read to us the poem bob's story at 1956 which is a poem you've written yourself thank you i wrote this poem in 2017 as a tribute to robert hill Hanna, vc to represent what his thoughts might have been as he travelled home to Canada in 1956 after attending the celebration for the centenary of Victoria Cross in Hyde Park, London. The poem is entitled Bob's Story 1956. I have just returned from London across the sea. What was I doing there? Just playing Bob Hannah me. Well, I marched beside my comrades off to see the Queen while wearing the Victoria Cross for its centenary. Near 70 years have passed since I was born, and beautiful out in a hurry in the kingdom of Morn. I loved it as a lad, but when the work could be found, I boarded that great ship for Canada I was bound. The mountains and the valleys, they reminded me of home. In great forests I toiled, as a lumberman I was known. I knew lodge and mates, life was just grand. Then the rumbling began over no man's land. The British Columbia volunteers from all over we came, Scottish, English, Irish, and Ulster Scots all the same. The words of our great song, they will leave me never. The thistle, shamrock, rose and twine, the maple leaf forever. Then a regiment of soldiers, after France we were sent, a fine body of men singing as we went. Determined we were the fight we'd soon join when we arrived that September in the port of Boulogne. Our battles began the following spring. We soon knew war was a harrowing thing. The blood, the guts, the horror and fear. The sun won't sorrow as victories, but oh, the price was dear. We fought in Vimy Ridge to the sound of the pipes. I looked out for my pals, so they gave me shards at stripes. Being shot troops of the army is what we are known for, the tough, swift, brave fellows of the Canadian Corps. To relieve passion deal, our next task they saw. If we took lawns, the Huns far we would draw. To a master plan by our own General Curry. We took Hill 70 in a lightning quick hurry. Many brave acts in that battle I did see. So how did it come that they called for me? How could it be that a medal I'd won? I was only doing my duty when we silenced that gun. I received that medal from King George no other, that bronze tarnished cross named for his grandmother. Just this June as I passed by our queen, I remembered how gracious her granda had been. Great honour I was given in Kilkeel the town. They gathered in from all county down, but many from there also answered the call, some not lucky like me, for in battle they'd fall. An officer's uniform and new duties I got to train new recruits to fight as I'd fought. I often worried when they joined the front line, would they die young or have fortune like mine? I returned from the war and made myself a life. I'm now very blessed with a son and a wife. Now Vancouver's my home, that's where I'll be, still thinking of more mountains sweep down to the sea. I often pray as I walk round my farm that all wars would cease and no more would come to harm. But when I'm gone beneath thy setting sun, I hope they say of me, a life's work well done. Well done, Neil. That was excellent. And thank you again for your time in service with Moore District. I think you've given us a very powerful image that Thistle and the Shamrock, for those of us who live in this community, it's a very powerful symbol indeed. Now I'm going to ask Piper Mark Smith to join us again, and Mark's going to play the Lament Hill 70 on the pipes. And it's worth just explaining a little um, about Hill 70 and why it's important. The, the war uh, uh, after the Somme in twin, uh, 1916 had ground to a, a halt. A lot of blood sacrifice on the Somme those months through June to September 16 really hadn't delivered the shock blow that the Allies had for. They had to regather more men, had to be conscripted, trained and sent to the front to place, replace those. Another difficult summer passed and they 
plan this big offensive, the third battle of Ypres. That they had to fight over the same place a third time gives you some indication of how difficult that war was. And so it was in August 16, across the line, the Canadians and others were asked to carry out actions to, to deflect attention away from the main effort to distract the German efforts. And so Robert Hanna, the officers and men of his company, found themselves on Hill 70 in Lawns in France, part of that awful battle of Passchendaele. Without the likes of the sacrifice that happened on Hill 70, without Hanna diving into that trench and taking on the enemy, stirring his company into action, stabilising a battalion, which allowed a brigade to complete its action, which allowed the division to achieve the points on the map that it needed to go. The British and the Allies were able to hold firm. My own regiment, the Royal Tank Regiment, was able to come through in Combray in 20, uh, 1917, pardon me, break the steel mate, rule the Germans, and from, from what happened in Hill 70 on through Cambrai and beyond, began the rolling up of the Western Front and the beginning of the end of the First War. So it is true to say that what your father did had a direct bearing on the progress of the war from there on. So Mark will play as this lament uh, of the iconic Hill 70. Again, uh, the ladies from the Military Wise Choir will join us uh, again up here and they'll uh, lead us in our uh, next hymn. So we'll just let uh, the ladies get to their places. Uh, for those of you who are uh, joining us or having to stand, thank you for your patience. Um, it's not too long to go. You're doing very well out there. So uh, we've got another hymn and then a few more bits and pieces to go. Uh, and then you'll be able to get a leg stretch or a breath. So you'll all join us now in the hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus.
an offering, uh, a collection. Now, Ian, uh, I hope you don't mind me being a little lighthearted, but if your late father were here, he would remind folk that it's a silent collection. <laughs> uh, your donations this evening are very much about maintaining the statue for the years to come. So we've uh, fought a good fight to get our statue, but there's battles to come to retain it and maintain it and continue the good work and to bring folk here and to, to talk to them about Hannah and our wider community. So, and we know that times are tight, but we'd appreciate you giving whatever you can. And the band are going to accompany uh, the collection of the offering with some music. Thank you. So uh, the, the bucket will still carry on the ride, but I'm conscious that um, you don't want to push her up with the weather or the light. So uh, uh, I've got a well, I'm going to put that up there. If anybody needs it now over the next five minutes, it's there. Uh, for uh, This breaks my heart every time. We chose it for the psalm centenary, and it has contained within it a beautiful message. Uh, so listen carefully uh, to what uh, they are singing about, and you'll understand the point. Robert Hill Hannah was lucky. Bob and his family were lucky. He came home. Many others didn't. They're on the memorial up the street. They're on memorials here. They're memorialised everywhere. So please listen and enjoy the song, but just remember the little message that's contained there. Cheers.
David and, and your family here and you're both very welcome for I'm sure you've lost a fair few evenings uh, to this project uh, and I'm sure some ill-tempered uh, uh, artists coming in some night where it hasn't quite gone as it should have done and, and the style that would be popular amongst the Ulster Scots men uh, thrown about so thank you David and family uh, this is a great tribute to your work. Bob Hanna and Trudy and um, the Canadian family and the Mourn family and it seems to grow larger every time we have a, an event commemorating Bob and um, I'm now convinced at least half of you are claiming uh, a seat on the basis of family membership so uh, you're very welcome and to the Hanna family a cornerstone of the Ulster Scots community more thank you too for your service your support for how you've uh, hosted our guests over the last few days and the way you've supported this project right thank you the Hanna family Mark and Amy, would you just stand up briefly, if you don't mind? So Mark and Amy, I can thank you very much. These folk were the driving force for the fundraising effort in Canada, which ran to more than five figures beyond the decimal point. An excellent effort and most generous of you to do that for us, and we are extremely grateful and will be forever grateful for that rekindling of that bond that this statue will help us to sustain from here on. Thank you. Ian, uh, thank you for joining us and speaking so well of us and so well of uh, the wider community. Uh, and we're very aware too that we're nested both within the wider British and Irish communities too. So this isn't just all about Ulster Scots. There's a much wider uh, story here. Neil mentioned the thistle and the shamrock and other aspects of that story too. But Ian, thank you very much for the support uh, of the Ulster Scots Agency. Colonel Hogg, uh, we're very grateful and honoured to have your company with us this evening. The Northern Ireland War Memorial did a very bold thing in reaching out and supporting this because it's a little off beam and I know that probably a few arms were twisted and ears bent in committee meetings to, to ensure that the charitable and principles of the organisation allowed it to embrace this. So thank you for being brave and doing that and for supporting us again this evening. Barrett and the British Columbia Regiment Association for their help and support regarding the design and detail uh, for the statue. Uh, these guys dug deep, produced military records uh, of Hannah himself, produced uh, imagery, produced details so that this thing was as accurate. Uh, James and Roberta's abiding fear was that some anorak would turn up someday and start picking holes in this badge or that number or whatever. This is what you would have seen at ease in the backwoods behind the trenches. So we have our man and he is accurate. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, I hope Diane Coulter is here somewhere. I think I can just see her through gaps. To the Kilkeel Development Association for kindly giving us permission to erect the statue on what is their ground. And so although we've rather taken over and dominated a little, we're very aware, Diane, of the gratitude and, and the, the way that you uh, helped to support us. <laughs> Only another page and a bit to go, so we're doing fine. <laughs> the loyal orders, both from Canada and here at home, uh, were very grateful. They supported us as we walked up and down mountains. They've marshaled for us many, many times. They've dug deep at different fundraisers. They've provided lodges to march, they've supported us through bands as well, and they brought check after check after check to make this happen. It's extremely inspiring that there is that sort of health and ambition and drive and desire and energy amongst the loan orders to make this happen, and that regard that as a very good thing. So thank you all too. <laughs> to all other organisations, and there are many of you, um, thank you very much who donated, who contributed anyway, who either helped to make things easier or overlooked something or were a little bit gentler on things like planning committees and other things that allowed this to go through as smoothly as it has. You know, this was happening during quite a difficult time uh, across all our communities and yet here we are and it was done. So there are a lot of people to thank for that too. <laughs> to all the volunteers in the Schomburg Society, and there are many, 
Uh, there were fellas here sleeping over last night just to make sure that nothing went awry or untoward uh, before today. There were folk here from 6 o'clock in the morning supporting David making the final touches. There have been folk for months and months working away in the background, writing letters, responding to letters, making things work. So James, Roberta, uh, Gareth, uh, the, the Esther, Stephen, the committee, all of the volunteers, well done and thank you very much indeed. We're nearly there. Um, I haven't quite lost a page yet. So to all our artists and performers this evening, including all those who took part in the parade, um, we've talked about the strength of the musical uh, engagement in Lorne, and we're very blessed in that way. To all those who turned out, the Military Wives Choir, the Silver Band, Piper, Mark Smith, who's joined us, I don't for the umpteenth time, I mean, I'm sure all of the owners in order, or at least the caravan at Cranfield, uh, our Lambeck drummer, as well as everyone else who has taken part the Deputy Lord Lieutenant, who has uh, not been known to you, but uh, wasn't even uh, in this country. He was brushing up on his Scots heritage until about four o'clock this afternoon and made it across. And I wonder, during some of the heavier rainstorms, whether or not I might have to dig out an old hat and uh, represent you myself. So we're very grateful to you too and everyone else who's here. To all the folk of Moore who've joined us, thank you so much for your patience and the support that you've given to this project, to the 11th night, to our festivals, uh, to sending your kids along to classes and all that you do, thank you so much too. And I'd like to welcome and thank the Chairman of Newry, Moore and Down District Council who've come here tonight. Um, this place is, is almost fit for a military parade. It is that clean and spick and span and tidy. Members of your team have been back and forth over the last few days, making this place as, as great as it can be. Uh, our commitment to you is that we'll keep it that way now that we have it in good order. They've been up trees, down drains, they've been everywhere. Uh, they've done a lot of good work to make this happen and they've supported Sean Berg and a lot of our wider activities too. And we're very grateful that you've come along tonight, very grateful to you and to Mary and the full team for the support that they give us. So thank you very much too. If I can ask the Reverend Bingham to join us uh, for uh, the benediction, and then um, we'll be upstanding as well, please, for the last one. And a big thank you to you, Kingsley, for chairing the event this evening. Thank you so much. So please be upstanding for the benediction and the national anthem. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this evening and forevermore. Amen. Take a seat for a little minute, one or two announcements to do, and then we'll draw things formally to a close. Um, in a little minute, we'll all get up standing again, and I'll invite uh, the Lord Lieutenant, uh, if he'll allow me to close proceedings, and he and I will uh, take our leave of you. Thereafter, um, there'll be an opportunity for photographs. You'll rightly understand why the Hannah family have first dibs on photographs. Uh, we'll bring the Lord Lift, uh, Deputy Lord Lieutenant back if he has time and we'll get one or two photographs with him too because it's a rare privilege to have him with us also. Uh, there'll be time for photographs for everyone. I know the light is fading, but just be kind enough to let the Hannah family capture their moment and then take as many photographs as you wish. Uh, and from there on, uh, those of you who want to go up to the, the big meeting, Moore Presbyterian Church, you're very welcome and we'll see you there. Others, uh, you know, safe uh, uh, on your way home. So again, if you can be upstanding now, Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.